uh, I think we are already far in, in time. I think we, I would like to get immediately the audience involved. Um, I expected far more contradictions here today, right? But it doesn't seem so. I think uh, when you look through all the presentations, I found a lot of uh, alignment, right? Some kind of different aspects. Are there some questions here from the audience? I think uh, I have to have a very pessimistic um, perspective on that. I think uh, um, <laughs> uh, because I, I recently, uh, and I can forward it to everybody, I recently saw a great study about the, how up-to-date design schools are. And uh, the renewal of, of programming, right, uh, takes about 16 years. So I give it to the next person. <laughs> Well, being at the MHMK, I would say don't go to Cologne. <laughs> so, um, no, I think um, we have a chance now at the MHMK having a new curriculum where we can really try to put in a couple of aspects. Like my first semester here at school um, had to develop personas. They had to develop user journeys. So all of these things that... Um, in traditional design schools um, were not really on the table. So I think it's um, personal involvement, probably, of the, of the teachers. I think that there is a general trend uh, towards an integration between uh, business management, technology, and design. This is happening in business school, for example. There's are adopting a designerly way of knowing things and it is happening also in design school that are uh, joining forces with technology faculties and management faculties uh, case is alto university for example who is building a design factory a new faculty in which these components are in, joined together polytechnico is doing something like this so do we all have to say something okay <laughs> Um, I think it's a very valid question, and I think it's something that's not only on your mind, but a lot of people think about this at the moment. Um, to be a bit more contradictory, which apparently we haven't been so far, um, I'll kind of go and say, I don't think that things were, um, were degrees or schools where things come together too much are going to be a clear benefit of bringing out people with too many skills. Because I think design thinking is not about what you learn, but it's more about the kind of person you are and the way you work. And then if you have a strong foundation, you know, being T-shaped, if you have a business background, you can be a designer, as you were saying. Or if you're a designer, you can also think about management issues. So I don't think it really determined by the school that you actually have and you know, which modules you kind of put together, but more kind of the way you learn to work and engage with other people and the projects you actually do for. Being from Cologne, <laughs> <laughs> the university, and, and, and having a master's in, in service design and having worked in the field for some time now, <laughs> I would actually say what you want to learn is you want to learn Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and you want to learn for sure After Effects and Premiere and some you know, video cutting program. You want to learn um, how to interview people. You want to learn design research. You want to learn about design theory. And you want to learn about industrial design. You want to do all of that because the only way that you can ever convince someone to invest a large amount of money into making whatever you're going to design real, you have to provide them something that's tangible, or something that's engaging. And um, if you do not want to sell a single product, but you want to sell the whole journey, you want to sell the whole story, you have to be able to tell that story very, very convincingly. Mm -hmm. I think that we're on the right way, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think, uh, um, before I, before, uh, I want to uh, get another question here. For me, the, the key point, uh, what I uh, experienced so far, um, is not that you're an expert. So um, on, on Tuesday, there was also an interesting discussion about the same thing, and there was a psychologist, and he said, how can you understand people if you're not a psychologist? <laughs> and... Um, then we said, okay, this design and service design, what we learn is to, um, to gain insights out of the people so that you have this interdisciplinary approach. This is one key element. So it's a broad, um, it's a broad method of getting 
the best out of people and to make a, to make an, the, the insights out of the people? Mm -hmm. I would say that's an it's a very interesting question because for me, because how can you understand people? If you want to understand, uh, uh, you know, a mother understands the child, for sure. Right? Much better than the psychologist, I would say. Right? But the problem is, and I think this is the difference for me, and uh, therefore we have psychologists, I think they have created some knowledge which is accessible. I think they have looked for, and I come back to my introduction, they have looked for models which, are, which can, can be applied. But this is also a little bit of critique I have regarding the design com community, and this is a, also a little bit an issue. I, I disagree with you a little bit. What, what, you, what, you, what you provided here, that you have to learn everything. You know, I'm now 55, and it's impossible. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't so, say that. So, I didn't say that. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's true. But this is a, there's a little bit, there's, there is a little bit of tendency that we sometimes, you know, because of the, of the breadth of the, you know, of the horizontal education needs, uh, that designer needs to connect a lot of cross-disciplinary knowledge, right? There's a tendency to overboard in educational systems. It's one thing. Because we didn't develop, for instance, MB it's a very good question I, I get always. Why does it take one or two years to get an MBA and a long time to get a, a master in, in design, right? And so it, it, because I, I tell you, because um, I think that's an, for me, it's an interesting part. It's an interesting part also on the regarding education system. If I don't have enough knowledge provided, it takes very long to look over the shoulder of somebody. And this is one of the, the disadvantages we have within the design schools. And a lot of design school models are still based on, on the fact that they live with a kind of ideology. Design education is based on tacit, tacit, tacit aspects, and I think I totally disagree with that. So I think, as you, as you pointed this as me, I have to kind of respond. I think also to, to your point you made earlier, I think there's a huge confusion in the design community, and I'm very sorry for anyone in here who might buy design or has bought design or will buy design. Sorry for that confusion. The confusion is that, that there is something that is fundamental to the human condition, and that's the creative process. The creative process is reflect, make, observe, reflect, make, observe, and so on. And you can start it at any point. You can start with making, you can start with observing, with reflecting. That is not something that has, you know, design owns. That's the same process you find in all sciences, in quality insurance, in everything. That's our condition as modern humans. Now, we think that we own, sometimes we think that we own the creative process, and then, because it's everywhere, we think that design is everywhere, but it's not. Designers bring something to the table that all the other disciplines do not bring to the table, and that is order and beauty, right? So there is a lot of kinds of design, if you want to think about the design and the creative process as design, but there is not a lot of design that designers do. 